to the mountain tops, we'd hear Christ be magnified. Sing it out. Sing it out. Sing it out. Christ be magnified. Let His praise arise. Christ be magnified.
your voice You have led me through the fire the darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have been And the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good And every breath that I am made And I will sing the goodness of God Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me When my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything This is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. When my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. Welcome to Bandung International Church. We're Rosemary and Waldemar Kowalski. We are honored and privileged to serve as your pastors, even in this time of turmoil and difficulties in a world that is so mixed up. We're so glad to gather with the people of God today. We welcome you to our online gathering. And we just pray that as you listen, as you sing, as you give with generosity, that you experience the presence and the power of God as you need it. Let's pray together for the world as we start. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this privilege of coming together this morning. We thank you that you're in control even when it seems like we cannot control what's around us. And Lord, as you look on us this, uh, this week, be with us. Welcome us into your family and help us to welcome others. This we pray in your name. Amen. Amen.
He has overcome, yes, He has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here, carrying our burdens, covering our shame. He has overcome, yes, He has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Root 1, verse 1 until 7, and Root 4, verse 13 until 17. There was a time when Israel didn't have kings to rule over them, but they had leaders to help them. This is a story about some things that happened during that time. There wasn't enough food in the land of Judah, so a man went to live in the country of Moab for a while. He was from Bethlehem in Judah. His wife and two sons went with him. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. The names of his two sons were Mahlon and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went to Moab and lived there. Naomi's husband Elimelech died, so she was left with her two sons. They got married to women from Moab. One name, one was named Orpa, the other was named Ruth. Naomi's family lived in Moab for about ten years. Then Mahlon and Kilion also died. So Naomi was, Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. While Naomi was in Moab, she heard that the Lord had helped his people. He had begun to provide food for them again. So Naomi and her daughters-in-law prepared to go from Moab back to her home. She left, her, she left the place where she had been living. Her two daughters-in-law went with her. They started out on the road that will take them back to the land of Judah. So Boaz got married to Ruth. She became his wife. Then he made love to her. The Lord blessed her so that she became pregnant and she had a son. The women said to Naomi, We praise the Lord. Today, He has provided a family protector for you. May this child become famous all over Israel. He will make your life new again. He will take care of you when you are old. 
He is the son of your very own daughter-in-law. She loves you. She is better to you than seven sons. Then, Naomi put the child on her lap and took care of him. The women who were living there said, Naomi has a son. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David. Good morning. This morning's scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 2. As I read it aloud, please follow along. Then Herod called for the wise men secretly. He found out from them exactly where the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem. He said, go, make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, bring me a report. Then I can go and worship him too. Well, after the wise men had listened to the king, they went on their way. The star they had seen when they were in the east went ahead of them. They saw the child with his mother, Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures. They gave him gold, incense, and myrrh. But God warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. So they returned to their country on a different road. When the wise men had left, Joseph had a dream. And in the dream, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. Get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you to come back. Herod is going to search for the child. He wants to kill him. So Joseph got up. And during the night, he left for Egypt with the child and his mother, Mary. They stayed there until King Herod died. So the words of the Lord had spoken through the prophet came true. He had said, I chose to bring my son out of Egypt. Herod realized that the wise men had tricked him, so he became very angry. He gave orders concerning Bethlehem and the area around it. All the boys, two years old and under, were to be killed. This agreed with the time when the wise men had seen the star. After Herod died, Joseph had a dream while he was still in Egypt. In the dream, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. The angel said, get up, take the child and his mother, go to the land of Israel. Those who were trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up. He took the mother, he took the child and his mother Mary back to the land of Israel. But then he heard that Archelaus was ruling in place of his father Herod. This made Joseph afraid to go there. Warned in a dream, Joseph went back to the land of Galilee instead. There he lived in a town called Nazareth. Hello, we're Rosemary and Waldemar Kowalski. We're the pastors of Bandung International Church, and we are so glad to welcome you today to Bic Online. Let's pray as we continue into the New Testament and talk about the God who knows our situation. We thank you, God, that you made yourself known in the human form, Jesus Christ, that you walked among us, that you experienced what life was like, that you know our situation, that we have a God who knows us in truth better than we know ourselves, and that you care for us. We are so grateful to know you. Amen. Yeah. Well, we live in a world of turmoil. The last weeks have been difficult. We're praying with friends who have family in the Ukraine and surrounding countries. We're praying with friends who are working in those areas. And that conflict, as well as conflicts around Asia, Africa, and other parts of the world, make us more aware of human suffering and struggles. Most of us know people who have been refugees. Our own parents came to mm -hmm. Canada after the last wars of Europe 
both World War II and the Cold War. Yeah. The Bible has many stories of refugees, and really a number of our heroes of the faith were wandering, looking for a place to survive. Read about it in Hebrews 11. And during the Feast of Sukkot, the Jews will welcome Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Aaron, and David. Why? Well, they're all refugees. They're not the only ones, though. We could add everybody who left Egypt with Moses. We could add Ruth. We heard about her today. Those who were taken with captive with Daniel, with his friends, many, many others. God provides for refugees, though. One of, when the law was set up, one of the most repeated commands in the Torah or the books of the law was to take care of refugees and others who need help, like widows and orphans. Listen to this from the third book of scripture, Leviticus. When a stranger resides with you in your land, you shall not wrong him. The stranger who resides with you shall be to you as one of your citizens. You shall love him or her as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. So that command is tied to the nature and the loving kindness of God. Huh. And how many times do you think that instruction is repeated in the Torah, in the first five books of the Bible? We actually find it 36 times. As Rosemary said, it's one of the most repeated instructions in the law. Perhaps I should say that again, because this is so easy to miss. I don't know if you notice that if you've been reading through those books, but the command to take care of the stranger, the alien, the refugee among you, is one of the most repeated instructions that God gives his people through Moses. Okay, so we're in the New Testament now, starting the story of Jesus the Messiah and those who follow him. Why are we reminding you of these refugees in the Jewish scriptures in the Old Testament? Good question. <laughs> the story of Jesus is connected to these refugee stories, both in his family, in his nation, and by something the writer Matthew says. Did you hear it in our reading today? Matthew 2 verse 15 says, and so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet. Out of Egypt, I called my son. Now, this is an interesting passage for scholars. Matthew quotes Hosea 11 verse 1. Like I said, this is interesting. It's a problem for Bible scholars because as far as we can tell, Hosea did not intend to give a prophecy about the Messiah. What is the book of Hosea about? Well, the unfaithfulness of Israel, and this passage is no exception. So here's what Hosea wrote. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt, I called my son. But the more they were called, the more they went away from me. They sacrificed to the Baals, and they burned incense to images. Yeah, this is originally about Israel abandoning God in favor of idols, not about the Messiah. And that can be a problem for Bible scholars because one of the rules of reading scripture is pay attention to the context, pay attention to the author's intended meaning. You know, if I were grading Matthew on this, I'd probably fail him. Yeah, you're a tough professor. <laughs> okay, not so fast. <laughs> Hosea's task as a prophet is to illustrate for Israel that God knows all about their faithlessness. But in his faithfulness, God is going to keep on calling that bride, that unfaithful nation, back to himself. When Mary is told that she will have a boy who will be named, the, or who is the Messiah, she's told to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. That's what his name means. And that's part of Matthew's story before he quotes Hosea. You know, and speaking of rescue, this event, the flight to and the return from Egypt, that ties the story of Jesus and his parents to the big story of God's people. When we mention Egypt, you may think of the story of Joseph in Egypt, lots of good things that happened there, and then Moses with lots of bad things that happened there. But you know, before that, Abraham and others fled to Egypt for safety and survival. Yeah, they had the Nile. 
So yeah. they nearly always were guaranteed yeah. some crops. Yeah, so the b story is much bigger than just the exodus of Israel from Egypt. The fact that Jesus, along with his parents, because he's just a little baby, repeats what had occurred with his people, with his nation before him, ties him into that big story. And I, I think that's another thing that Matthew is doing here. He's reminding us that Jesus fulfills the whole of God's plan with Israel before they went to Egypt to get food, to not die in a famine. God had planned for them to be rescued, and so the same thing happens with Jesus. When you see news coverage of refugees in crisis, your heart probably hurts for the suffering, as ours does. Mm -hmm. Exile is especially hard on women and mothers with young children. The older boys and, mother and men can work to support themselves and their families, especially if they come to a country that needs manual labor or you know, hard physical work. Yeah, but little children, babies, honestly, they're a liability. Somebody to be helped who is rather than being able to help the family or others. And if the family is poor, easy targets for abuse, natural victims. So how did Mary and Joseph and Jesus survive? We don't get the impression they were wealthy. Remember last week? They brought the smallest offering you could for the dedication of Jesus. Ah, but did you hear in the story that when the wise men visit, they bring treasures, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These valuables can be traded to help this family survive. And don't miss the role of the hero of Joseph. Remember, he's become father to a son who is not his natural born child. Do you think that's what he was dreaming of when uh, he planned on marrying a girl? And then she's pregnant, but not with his son. And then they all become refugees. Oh, man. That's a, it's a hard call on Joseph's life. But thank God for faithful husbands and family and fathers who stay with their families, even when life seems hard, even unbearable. You know what? That's a good takeaway. That's a good application right there already. But let's keep going. So we have Jesus as a helpless refugee. His family is probably unwanted wherever they would go, just a liability. But Matthew tells us the story makes it clear that this is not a mistake. This is God's plan. God is at work in the world. The Messiah, the savior of the whole world is vulnerable, hunted, a target. He's a helpless refugee. Now, don't forget, this is God in the flesh. He's the creator and ruler of the universe. <laughs> wow, what a way to come to save the world. But is that the end of the story? No. In fact, near the end of Matthew's good news, the gospel of Jesus, he records something that Jesus says as Jesus circles back. And the story goes beyond that to the end of time. The parable or the story of the sheep and the goats. You can read it for yourselves in Matthew 25, where Jesus is talking about. Yeah, something with punishment. eternal significance, punishment and reward. And our, the Bible is really clear on this, that our salvation comes only through the sacrifice Jesus made, the price he paid on a, the cross. But you know what? Even if we're not saved by good works, we have been saved for good works. So listen to what Jesus says. The king will speak to those on his right. All right, the story that Jesus tells is of sheep and goats. They're all in the flock. So these aren't, aren't people who are far away. But what distinguishes those who God is pleased with? The king will speak to those on his right. He will say, my father has blessed you. Come and take what is yours. It is the kingdom prepared for you since the world was created. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you gave them to me. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Jesus is very, very clear here. 
Those who care for others, including the stranger, the refugee in need, go to an eternal reward, to blessedness. The true followers of Jesus are the sheep who hear his voice. The others, the ones who ignore the needs around them, their fate is an unhappy one. You could say so much more about this, but here's what we want you to hear clearly. Our Lord, our Savior, was once himself a refugee. His story is part of the big story of God's people who were refugees. Take care of those in need, God said to his people. He said, take care of the strangers, the foreigners, and the refugees. And that has not changed. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Honestly, we're all refugees. We used to sing a song when I was a kid that included the words, this world, this world is not my home. In Hebrews 11, the chapter we mentioned near the beginning, these heroes of faith are told that their reward would only be given to them along with us. We are all refugees. So what does this story mean to you and to us today? Are we looking at this to feel sorry for Joseph, Mary, and the child Jesus? It certainly does give us compassion for this young family, but that's not all. You know, today we are surrounded by people in need. Hospitality is one way we welcome the stranger. Before the pandemic, Rosemary and I hosted young people each month. Imagine 70 young adults from 15 to 25 nations in one room for a meal, a movie, and conversation. It got noisy, but it was so much fun. Many of them had few friends before they came because they were strangers. They were from other countries studying here. They would hide out in the costs in their dorm room and try not to get into trouble. Try not to be noticed. And then they come into a room full of people who welcome them, accept them, and care for them, care about them. We have a saying at movie night, that is, the first time you come, you're a guest. The second time, you're a friend. But the third time, you are you're a family. family. And we watched over and over how their new brothers and sisters made them feel welcome. It was just one model of making people feel welcome. Yeah. They would make friends get together between visits to our place and they were no longer strangers. We love that. Hospitality is one way to welcome the stranger. Who do you know who needs a friend to eat with, to care for them and to listen to their story? That's a gift. Be hospitable. And another practical way is something that Bic does all year long, is we gather resources for Simbaco and special projects. Do you remember the Christmas project, the donations that we collected in December and January? They are being spent. Yeah. One of the things we've done for a young family in our neighborhood here is fix situation in their house that was just, it was dangerous, un dangerous unlivable. We were told by others in our community, these people really, really need help and they can't help themselves. And so Daniel, one of ours, uh, with the leadership team and our, we as pastors asked him to go and take care of this. So, And he did. And we got to buy something special for a home for children. Yeah, we bought them a washing machine. They really needed it. And no, you know, we, you, we, you, 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 we, you, we had the pleasure of going and picking yeah. it out and uh, having it delivered to them. But it was your gift that your made generosity. it so. Yes. You know, if you're the refugee, the stranger in town, and perhaps an expat who is new to Indonesia, get in touch with someone at BIC or with us. We'd love to welcome you and help you settle in. This is what God does over and over through his own people. So this week, here's the challenge. Find someone in need. Listen to how you can meet their need. Whether it's a meal together, sharing what God has given you together with them, or some other way. Jesus said when we do good to the least of these, the most unimportant person with a cup of cold water, with food for the hungry, visiting those in prison, when we care for others, we do it for him. And his Father in heaven takes notice. Good works don't earn your salvation. Only Jesus can do that. And he has done it. But in gratitude, we bless God as God blesses us. You've been made rich in every way. 
so that you can give to others and they will thank God. That's what Paul writes to the Corinthian followers of Jesus in 2 Corinthians 9. This week, look for where God is present. Where does he want to work and provide through you? Who is that refugee, that stranger, that widow, that orphan that you can help in the name of Jesus? And so we are going to have a celebration now that is um, something we do uh, to celebrate what Jesus has done for us, what he's provided for us. If you don't have something to eat and drink, go ahead and get those items so that we can uh, um, enjoy this together, gather together to do this. We have decided to follow Jesus for the first time today. Or you may already have made that decision a long time ago. If you are a follower of Jesus and on that journey, let's join the celebration Jesus started with his disciples. Over the centuries, the followers of Jesus have come together at the table to share good news. And what is the good news? It's that we admit that we cannot help ourselves. We admit that God has done something for us. We believe that what he's done is sufficient, that his work fixes the problem we have, does what we cannot do. And we confess, God, we're committing to you. We're going to follow you. We commit ourselves to God. And you know what? Jesus has overcome sin and death for us. There is something wonderful ahead. Paul says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. This is the ritual that we celebrate together every week. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So please take your bread and eat together with us his body broken for us. Thank you, God, that your body was broken for us. Thank you for the privilege of celebrating around the world with those who follow you, who believe in what you've done. Thank you so much. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please take your cup and drink with us. His blood shed for us. Oh God, we thank you for that broken body, which brings us healing, for the shed blood, which brings us salvation, reconciliation to you, first of all, and also to each other. We thank you for your wonderful gifts and for the promise that we will celebrate someday together with you. Thank you, God. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in this celebration and this gathering this morning. This is an act of faith. We celebrate what Christ has done because it's changed us and made us part of God's family. As we go into the final songs of worship and then into the week, here's a benediction or a blessing. May the blessing of God fall on our community. May it be a safe place full of understanding and acceptance where one can be as they are without the need of any mask or pretense or image. May this place be one of discovery, discovery of the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, where we from the clay emerge to deepen and refine our knowledge and our acts in the kingdom of God. We, we go, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ 
and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
can melt the heart that's hard and speak life into my soul. Who can spin the world around and hold me ever close? Can search the depths of me and lull me to the core. Who controls the world I see and walks me through the road? Cry.